Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Bus Coupler Training. I'm your host Leandro Mada, and in this video we're going to talk about the bus coupler that we can use over Modbus TCP or Ethernet IDP. So let's go to the presentation. So the idea is to show you how you can identify some issues on the bus coupler of the thing that you can have on the bus cover on the LEDs and then how we can connect using a third party device to read information from the bus cover. So let's continue with this. So as we see in the past, we had the possibility to use the mini USB of the bus cover in order to open the bus cover web interface. So if we use this IP address in our browser, we should be able to access into the web interface. Then you should have the administrator, administrator and user and password, and then you must change the password. So, so far this has already been covered before. So once you are with the bus coupler, okay, in the left part, you have these four LEDs. These LEDs give us this information that we have over here. So if you have the power supply, this one will be on. And then if you have something regarding the IOs, the TN3 models that come next to the bus coupler, you should need to check the IO status LEDs. Okay, so I don't, the idea of this is not that you remember this, but the idea is if it's everything working fine, this screen should be on. Okay, so this is how you can identify where the problem is. Now, we also have the MS and NS, so model status and network status. So if we have a problem regarding the network, we should check this NS, okay? And this is a problem on one of the devices that are next to the TN3, then we need to check also this one. Then, these two rotary switches, as we saw before, allowed us to identify the device in our network. So if we use this uh, numbers okay in the tens and these numbers and the ones this means that the configuration will be from DHCP and here you can have some examples on the configuration so if the 10 is 8 number 8 over here okay and this one the, the ones the Y is 6 okay the device for the ACP will be this one okay and then if we use the auto by default, we have the IP address, and then if we access into the web interface, you should be able to change that. And if you select boot P, it allows you to make the boot P by the MAC address of the device that you can find over here. So the idea now is to play around with the bus copper over model TCP. So we need to open the TN3 BC IO configurator the final architecture that we have in my case i have a tm3 tm3 uh, analog input and analog output module we need to create the file import that in the web interface and then we should be able to read from a third party uh, device or our plc's or another device the information from the bus cover so let's go to the uh, tm3 bus coupler so we just need to create a new one and I'm going to use model TCP. Here we just need to add the model. In my case, I have this mix. Okay, add. I'm going to add it. Okay. So here you have the monitoring timeout. Okay. In case you have a timeout, you need to change this value. Then in this case, I am going to define what I'm going to do. So I'm going to select these two analog inputs as 10 volt, okay, voltage, and the output also voltage. In my case, I have connection this, uh, I have connected this analog input, okay, to an analog output of the PLC, so we can read it. Then, the important thing here is this memory mapping. Here you can find the defined memory addresses in order to access to this information. So if you go to inputs, okay, you can see the offset, okay, and the start position for the input. So if I want to read from outside, I should access to this 
plus the offset that I want. The same can be applied for the analog outputs. So this is it for this part. Now, what we need to do is to save this project. So save, go into save new, okay, training, desktop, save, close. So we have already configured the bus coupler over model TCP and we have configured the TN3 models. What we need to do now is to download this configuration to the bus coupler. If you are using, for example, the Modicon M21 or the Modicon, uh, one of the Modicon's PLC that we have in Ecosuction Machine Expert, this part is not required because the software, the PLC, send the configuration. Okay, but that will be covered later. So now if we open a browser, Okay, this one, we need to type the IP address of the PLC. In my case, just show you the IP address of the PL of the bus coupler is this one. Okay. And I have the connection over there. Okay. So this is the connection, just beside this. As you can see over there, I have the Ethernet communication, I have um, power supply of the model, and here is the connection I have from the Modicon N172 that's going to give me signals, analog signals to the uh, analog input of the bus coupler. So, I need to type this IP address. Okay. For this okay good so administrator administrator I have already changed this so administrator login administrator there we go just wait for this Let's resize this part okay so I have the connection with the device now so what we can do now is to make the configuration okay select the configuration open our project project training you can see this is what i have configured okay once you have added over here you cannot change this part to the type but you can escalate that information okay and you can modify the timeout and here you can still see the memory map now, what we need to do is to apply these changes. So, I agree. You should read all this and then agree. Perfect. Configure successful. So, now we should be able to monitor the device. So, detect. You can see over there that I have the device. So, this part is good. So, we have the low the configuration of the bus coupler. Now, what I'm going to do is to show you how we can read this information for another device. So, what I'm going to do is to open uh, a MOSCAN, okay? This software, okay? And just beside this part, okay? So, the idea now is to read the information that I see over here. I'm going to open the other software which is for the uh, the other PLC that's going to be connected okay to my bus coupler so I'm going to send this information 50 that's going to be 5 volts if I know wrong so if we open again the browser mm -hmm, we should be able to see something over here Okay, TN3, TN3. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Da, 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 da. See something here. Just let me check. Okay, I know what is the problem. Okay. I believe now we should be able to read something. Okay, there we go. 
this case i forgot to energize the the bus coupler so um the module for the bus coupler okay i was energizing only the bus coupler but not the model that was a problem so um here you can see that i send an information from the other plc to the to the bus coupler okay so if i change this part okay you should be able to see some data now uh, da, 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 da. let's change these to 75 okay so you can see that it's changing so now if you want to use the information from the bus coupler into another device we can do this okay which is uh like the part of the device we can see so we should be able to see holding registers in this case okay the length will be depend on what we have configured on the bus coupler so if the input register start for example for the 3001 okay that will be my starting address so 3001 in this case we need to add one to the address okay so here i'm going to read only one register for the register okay now i need to identify which is the device this is going to be the device okay and i'm going to read something over here okay so now i should be able to see some information over here okay and here is something important here you can see that the information i'm reading okay uh spanish okay and that is because of the timeout that i have so in this case the master device or the client that is asking the information need to uh read the information more quickly so here if i change this for example to 100 millisecond okay you should be able to see the information clearly okay without having this uh blinking values okay so that will solve the problem in case you have this so this is how you can read the values and if you want to um, modify the values okay just connect again you can see over here that we have the values okay here now if i want to modify these values okay what we need to do is to modify this position and this position will start by 3501 so we need to add one okay so 302 this will be the holding register for the outputs now here I should be able to change this value so i can add a 46 update should be able to see 46 over there so this is how you can uh read and write information for the bus coupler so the bus coupler will allows you to have uh, a remote island okay um then you can add all the tn3 models that you want up to seven and if you want more you will need to add the transmitter and receiver then once that configuration is downloaded into the bus coupler you should be able to access into the mod bus uh into the coding register that you have on the bus coupler and then using third-party software or PLC, you should be able to read information. Okay, one of the advantages of having the, for example, the Modicon M21 or the Modicon uh, PLC that you have in Eagle Machine Expert is that this configuration is in the software and is downloaded to the bus cover, so you don't need to go through these steps in order to make it work. Okay, but we're gonna cover that later. So. Uh, this is how you can use the bus coupler over Modbus TCP. The behavior on the Ethernet IP will be a little bit different. Okay, you will need to have an EDS in order to read the data to see much faster, but you get the idea for this uh, bus coupler uh, Ethernet IP and Modbus TCP. So, thank you very much for watching this video, and I see you on the next one.